did you know that both Boromir and Faramir have elven blood running through their veins? A la Tulia Meldonia, Ahara Mariese, and welcome to another fun fact video about the half elves of Gondor. So, if you're already familiar with Tolkien's Legendarium, then you will know that there are three documented instances of an elven woman and a mannish man procreating and making babies. And in all three instances, the elves and the men in question are particularly noble and important people. You know, Luthien the Fair, Idril Celebrindal, and Arwen Undomiel are all the daughters of extraordinary elven, and in Luthien's case, Maya parents. And their male paramours, Beren, Tuor, and Aragorn, are all great heroes of their respective ages. In fact, both Aragorn and Arwen are descended from both Beren and Luthien and Tuor and Idril. So basically, everyone involved in making half-elves, known as Peridil, is a big deal, right? Well, perhaps not. You see, Tolkien added an additional wrinkle into this legend that seems to buck the trend. And it all begins with a love story between the Sindarin, that's the grey elven king Amroth, and the Sylvan, that's the wood elf maiden Nimrodel. Now, this tale is a bit of a sad one, to be honest, and I'm not going to go into the details right now, but the basics of the story are that King Amroth was in love with the maiden Nimrodel. And as is the case with many epic love stories, it doesn't end well. You see, Amroth drowned, and Nimrodel simply disappeared. But before all that, they journeyed west with a handful of attendants all the way from Lothlorien to the southern coast of Gondor. So, at this point in the Third Age, it's about 70 years before the Gondorian line of kings gave way to the line of stewards, the Silvan Elves and the men of Gondor had very positive relations with each other. In fact, no small number of elves even set sail into the west from this Gondorian harbour. And so, when King Amroth drowned in the Bay of Belphalas, the men of the region named a nearby peninsula after him. And thus the swan city of Dol Amroth was founded. Now, Dol Amroth is a fascinating place because, although it is a principality of Gondor, and the princes of Dol Amroth do pay tribute to the king slash steward, in many ways it's politically independent from the rest of the nation, and it's certainly culturally independent from other places we see like Minas Tirith, or Osciliath, or Ithilien. And the reason for this is that the whole coastal region of Belphalas is considerably older than the nation of Gondor. Like way, way, way back at the end of the First Age, this region was settled by Sindar Elves, and in the Second Age, it became a colony ruled by a family of faithful Numenorians. So, by the time that Gondor finally emerged at the turn of the Third Age, this coastal culture had already been thriving for a very long time. Now, the reason that all of this is significant comes down to two relatively humble characters. You see, at around the same time that King Amroth drowned in the bay, a descendant of the former Numenorean colonists was out wandering around the local area, and his name was Imrazor. And while out wandering, Imrazor just so happened to encounter an attendant of the aforementioned maiden, Nimrodel, who had become lost in the woods. Now, this attendant was a Sylvan elf called Mithralas, and as the legend goes, Imrazor and Mithralas eventually fell in love and married. So, this is kind of crazy. Because unlike Beren, or Tuor, or Aragorn, Imrazor was no legendary hero, nor a vanquisher of evil. And unlike Luthien, Idril, and Arwen, Mithralas was just a humble wood elf 
not even particularly noble amongst her own kind. And yet, together, they made two half-elven children. Now, these children are called Galador and Gilmith. And just like their parents, they're not particularly important figures in the epic history of Middle-earth. But they are worth mentioning, because Prince Galador grew up to become the first prince of Dol Amroth, and 21 generations later, he was succeeded by his descendant, Prince Imrahil. Now, Prince Imrahil is an awesome character, and he's one that you'll be familiar with from The Return of the King if you've read the books. And oh, how I wish he'd made it into the movies. You see, just before the Siege of Minas Tirith, Imrahil rode to the capital's defense, and he brought with him gilded banners bearing his token of the ship and the silver swan, and a company of knights in full harness riding gray horses, and behind them, seven hundreds of men at arms, tall as lords, grey-eyed, dark-haired, singing as they came. Now, these knights of Dol Amroth are badass. In fact, Prince Imrahil returns from the Battle of Pelennor Fields without even taking a single scratch. He drives off the host of orcs and variags and he doesn't even get nicked. It's incredible. Anyway, after the fighting is done, and all the heroes of that battle gather, it is Legolas who recognizes why Prince Imrahil is so special. Because Imrahil is of course descended from Mithralas. He has elven blood, and Legolas knows it. In fact, Tolkien tells us, at length they came to the Prince Imrahil, and Legolas looked at him and bowed low. For he saw that here indeed was one who had elven blood in his veins. Now what makes this fact especially fun is that Prince Imrahil has a sister called Findwilas, and she ended up marrying the steward Denethor, which means Findwilas is the mother of Boromir and Faramir, which means Prince Imrahil is their uncle. Which means Boromir and Faramir both have elven blood in their veins. How awesome is that? So there you go. It's a relatively minor detail, and compared to the great elf man couplings of the Silmarillion, it's easy to dismiss Imrezor and Mithralas entirely. But their union brought about Boromir and Faramir. And although it's very possible that the brothers didn't even know it, you know, this happened thousands of years before they were born, after all. They too possess the blood of the Eldar. At least enough that Legolas is able to perceive it in their uncle simply by looking at him. Now, there are extra bonus points on this fun fact because Prince Imrahil's daughter goes on to marry Eomer, the king of Rohan. And Theoden's mother, a woman named Morwen Steelsheen, was also related to the princes of Dol Amroth. So even Rohan gets enriched with that little tiny bit of elven blood. Anyway, I find all of this a pretty cool detail. And if you found this interesting, then there are plenty more videos on this channel that are just like it, and there'll be plenty more videos coming in the future. But. As always, until next time, my dear friends, much love, stay groovy, and Nevaya Melanine.